Hey YouTube, Coralash1990, bringing you another Wars TCG deck profile, and this time I have my Mavericks deck. And this deck is mainly focused on playing a bunch of starships and trying to have the most presence in space and banking on your opponent not doing the same. But if they are on that same game plan, your ships tend to be powerful enough, especially with all of the cards you're going to have piloting to overpower what ships they do have. So first we're going to start with the locations. I'm going to start with the starting location, and it is Remote Power Plant. Has two energy icons for you, one for your opponent, has the symbol, and as long as a player has an inverted ship here, he or she generates two more energy here. A lot of our ships can invert, and so we have ways to do that if necessary. Though it's just a good 2-1 starting location. And next we are running the encampment. That's also a planet. And it is approach route. Basically, it's got the encampment rule where you can play it underneath to gain this and this and have your opponent not gain that. Typically, though, you're going to be just running these out because you're trying to go wide with ships and trying to drain your opponent as much as possible from as many different locations as possible. And we also have two more encampments, and these ones are the ones that are on the ground. These ones you probably will put under here, but we do have some units that we can throw out. They're typically other vehicles, though, but... They're here if you need to play them like that, or if you need this more energy and more of the threshold icons, you can put them underneath as need be. And finally, for our last Maverick-related site that is a sector, it is Outer Rim Station. has the one and none for your opponent, so you can't drain them for anything here. And it has the Maverick symbol. The reason why this one's so good is because you can pay five energy and invert target inverter ship here. You may only use this ability during the draw phase. Any player may use this ability. So this is a great way to get your, obviously your ships to invert. And finally, well, I guess I shouldn't say finally. There's two more different locations in here. These ones are also sectors. You can have an unlimited amount of them if you need them. They do have a three destiny value, which is pretty Pretty cool. Typically, these are all zero. Two for you, one for your opponent. And it also says each card a player reveals for battle destiny during a battle here is destiny minus two. So it kind of mitigates the destiny flips and all that other stuff. And now, lastly, our last sector is the Triganium Source. That has three destiny, two energy for you, one for your opponent. And each player's drain here is plus one for each related site he or she controls. So these are technically Ganymede, so is this. So you could play these next to this, try and control both of these and that for an additional drain. Though that probably won't happen all that often. And that is it for the sites. And I do run a little bit more sites than usual because some sites here have a battle destiny value. So typically I don't run nearly that many. Now we're going to go over all of the ships for the deck. And there's quite a few of them. So first off, we have Cat's Claw. It is a unique ship. It has the dot there, so you can only have one of it in play. Three cost, two destiny, three threshold, which is pretty rough, but it's a good ship, especially in the right scenarios. A 215 stat line, and it says each time you play a character who has piloting aboard this ship, you may invert this ship. And it has the 415, and it has the captain trait with killer Kate Grim Grimmelkin. Yeah, I think that's how you say her name, which she is in the deck. And a once per turn ability, you can pay three energy to draw two cards from your reserve. So once you play the captain to her ship, the ship gets pretty good. I mean, tactics is pretty poor, but four power is good. Five defense is good. All around, just a, a decent ship. Next, we play one rugged empty. Three cost, two threshold, one destiny, which is pretty lame. A 2-1-3 stat line, which is just meh. But at each time you win a battle here, you can invert this ship. And it goes from it goes again to a 2-1-3. And revert this ship to make target pending drain here plus two. So this is a pretty key. Like, it doesn't seem all that great. But the whole point is you want to invert it and then revert it. And this kind of help with the whole drain package that you're trying to do here. 
Next, one of my favorite ships, we play four copies of it, is the Dark Slider. Cost two, two threshold, four destiny, which is good. A two, one, three stat line. And it can invert itself pretty easily just by paying four energy. And when it's inverted, it goes to a three, one, four stat line. And each time you reveal a card for battle destiny during a battle here, you may revert this ship. And if you do, you make that card's destiny plus two. So adding basically two more attrition to a fight and then upping the power by two is pretty sweet. Next, we run four copies of Widowmaker. Three costs, two threshold, three destiny. Just straight three, three, three. This card's covered in just threes. <laughs> you can stack target card in your opponent's lost pile face down on your stockpile asset to invert this ship. We won't be doing that. And you don't really want to invert this anyway because it only cares about stockpile assets. Basically, it's a three cost, three, three, three stat line. Three tactics is really, really good. That's a, that's a sweet spot I'm noticing for this game because it typically means... You only need two things there to be able to flip Battle Destiny, on average. Next, I run four Death Dealer. Three cost, one threshold, three destiny. Which is, again, pretty average. There's a lot of three destinies in this deck. You can, and it has a 2-2-4 stat line. And you can do this once, pay for energy. If this ship is at a sector that has a Maverick support icon on your side, invert it, which it probably will. And when it's inverted, it has a, again, 2-2-4 stat line. And then once per turn, you can revert this ship, damage target ship in a sector battle here. So it's a good way to just peck off pesky ships that hopefully, you know, don't have a way of healing or avoiding all the damage. It's just an all-around good card. Now we play three or four. There's just so many threes. We play four Belt Runner, three cost, three destiny, one threshold. Again, the three, three, three stat line. And when the ship enters play... If you have a card stacked on your stockpile asset, you may put up to two cards from your hand on top of your reserve in any order. So it can kind of heal you too, sort of. But again, you're not doing that. It's just a good ship. Just threes everywhere. It's kind of a common thing here. We play four Plundering Bandits. Two cost, one threshold, six Destiny, which is just great. I'm going to move these over. And it has a 0-1-4 stat line, which is pretty terrible. But again, if you need a cheap ship to help Get your tactics up to four this can do it and at the end of each battle you have one here you may pay one energy if you do invert this ship and it turns into a 414 so you can either use your site to invert this or you can just throw this in as like a like a freebie add-on and hopefully you know you'll win that battle and then invert it and then it, at that point you can move it and it can typically go take care of whatever else you need to take care of with a 414 stat line it's pretty pretty good Lastly, for our ships, run four copies of Razorjack. It costs zero, one threshold, and it has four destiny. This is also six destiny. So, again, the destiny flips in this deck are, on average, pretty good. It has a zero, one, three stat line, which isn't great. But each time you reveal a card of battle destiny that has a destiny six or more, you may pay three energy if you do invert this ship, which can it can happen. But typically, you're going to invert this through the site. And when it's inverted, it goes to a 5-1-2, and that's it. And again, 5 power is pretty solid, so it can kind of just, at that point, take care of whatever it needs to do on its own. 5 power is pretty good. And then next, we'll go into the non-ship units, so the pilots and vehicles. And to start things off, I run one Killer K Grimalkin, which is the one that goes with this ship here. She's five cost, which is really high. Three threshold, which is really high. She's a two destiny, which isn't really all that great. But she has three power, five tactics, so her alone will have a destiny flip. Four defense, she has piloting three. So basically anything she pilots, she's going to add three to its power stat, which is really good. And then a once per turn ability of pay for energy. If this character is at a sector, your opponent can't reveal cards for battle destiny during battles at target other sector until end of turn. That's really, really good. Being able to make sure your opponent can't get like an attrition flip on you or like, you know, a destiny flip for pecking off ships is, is very, very good. Like that's, this card's very solid and having five tactics alone pretty good she's more than likely going to be going straight into a ship next we run one battle axe Bowden. three cost three threshold 
Again, three threshold. It's it's just making it to where you can only play a late game. Five, Destiny. A 3-2-4 stat line. She has piloting two. And then once per turn, you can pay three energy. Move target ship. This character is aboard. And you may use this ability during your deploy phase. So this is a way to move stuff before the battle phase. So pretty solid there too. This is a good late game way to kind of fly things around and peck off other weaker sectors, you know, sector battles and whatnot. Next, we run four Lauded Flyer. Three cost, two threshold, one destiny, which kind of sucks. She has a one, two, three stat line. We don't really care about that all that much. She has piloting two, which is what she's in here for. And each time you win a sector battle here, activate the three energy, which is pretty good. So again, you're going to be playing a lot of ships. You're going to be playing a lot of pilots onto those ships to make them even better and getting all the advantages off of everything else here. All right, next we play four Zhang Hot Rod. I think I'm saying that name right. Four cost, which is kind of expensive. One threshold, which is decent. Two destiny, which isn't really all that great. But it's four power, one tactic, and three defense. It's size two, and it has transport two. And when you play this vehicle, you may put up to two cards from your hand onto the top of your use pile, and then draw the same number of cards from your reserve. So it's, it's a good way to have some presence on the ground while also filtering through your hand, which is... Which is pretty key, I think. Plus, we're keeping the theme of, like, ships and vehicles and whatnot. So, you know, why not, right? And then lastly, for the ground presence, I run for Boxer. Three cost, two threshold, two destiny, a four, two, six stat line. It's size three with transport two. And each time you reveal a card for battle destiny during a site battle here, you may pay one energy. If you do, make that card's destiny plus one. You may... You may change no more than one card. Okay, one card's destiny during the you know during battle each turn. So I've never actually used that ability in games. It's, <laughs> it's I typically just just played it and then sat it there. And people typically try to avoid a, a, a side battle that has just a bunch of four power stuff on it. So again, it's just, it fits the theme of vehicles and whatnot. And it's you know six defenses pretty pretty solid so if you do end up losing a battle there it can pretty much just be soaked up by that thing alone more than more often than less now we're going to go into the interrupts for the deck i play four max retros it's a one cost one threshold which is good for destiny which is good it's an interrupt lost so whenever you play it it's gone as an additional cost to play as interrupt, you can revert your inverter ship or revert a unit at the same location of target pending attack, and you can just straight up cancel an attack. This card's really good. It's 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 a fog, basically, for this game, for a certain site, by reverting one of your ships, and then you can just fly them back to that station, invert them again, fly them back. Kind of takes a, a couple turns to do that, but still, being able to just negate an attack, very, very good. Card's definitely a four of in my opinion. Lastly, to round off the deck, I have four synced up, cost zero, one threshold, six destiny. Kind of one of the reasons why it's in here. And it's an order use, so you can only use it during your turn, and when you use it, it goes back into your use pile. Reveal three target cards from the top of your reserve. Put one of them beneath your active pile, one of them into your lost pile, and put the other card on top of your reserve. So this is a way to help fix your destiny flips into higher destiny numbers. It's basically the only reason why it's in here. That and, well, six destiny is nothing to joke about either. But yeah, that is my Maverick deck profile. It plays very similarly to my Quay one, but just, just in space. You're basically just trying to go wide with all of these locations and just drop one or two ships on each of them and this make your opponent spread their resources thin, and if they don't really have much space presence, you're probably just going to slowly drain them out over the course of the game more often than not. Plus, it's thematic. You know, everything here is more or less a vehicle and everything has piloting. It very much has the, like, bandit kind of a ragtag sort of a feel to it. And it's a, it's a fun deck, I think. And again, these are all built just off of some starters and set two. Once I get more of set one, I'll probably update this video in the future. But hopefully this video has helped some people building decks for 
you know, this particular faction. And if you have any comments or anything or any tips for me, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.